This is a walkthrough through my electronics bay and CAN bus setup. So, first of all, I have a dual 2448 volt system. So, this small power supply is for 48, uh, 48 volts, going to all the stepper motors. And the big guy here is uh, for 24 volts, that's powering all the hot ends. So this is a 500 watt unit for uh, six hot ends, which is a bit of an overkill, but yeah, better, better more than less. And uh, then I have an Manta 8 motor toolboard just sitting beneath the fan. And I'll get to the fan later. And uh, then just your run of the mill screen, run of the mill so it's stayed relay for the heat bed and uh, then a CAN bus controller. So this is just your typical USB to CAN controller. And uh, that then goes through the twisted pair. So the controller only has a twisted pair. The ground is already shared through the USB connection. And twisted pair goes through the frame up to the back of the printer. And here we get 24 volts through two very beefy wires. This is again probably a wrong overkill, but better, sa better safe than sorry. And uh, then through uh, this like a connector into the distribution board. So this connector is just so I can remove the rest of the system and work on it separately. And the distribution board uh, let me get it up, open. Uh, hello. Uh, okay. I'll need the tool. And that should just come out. All right. So the distribution board is just soldered down into USB wires. So I'm using a USB-C charging cables that are rated for 5 amps and they have been working very well for me for about I need to check but I think either 1000 or 10,000 hours which 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 ever sounds more plausible for like a year of printing and also my termination resistor for canvas is just sitting right here and from here, I just have uh, six separate USB wires going to the, each of the hot ends. So yeah, in this orientation, they're kind of all down on the floor. And I have had zero problems with the wires. Uh, this one goes to uh, Rapido hot end. So this one actually pulls 100 watts or 4 amps. Been working well, no problems there. Like the rest are like... 40, 50 watt heaters that are pulling like two, two amps roughly. Uh, so the nice thing about this is this allows like a very nice bundle that doesn't tangle up with the rest of the hot ends. I just have like small clips here clipping it all together. And then on the business end, I have the connector just all like filled in with the silicone so that it doesn't wiggle open here where it's in the connector. I have had two issues and both of them are down to like just sloppy connections. Yeah, one is this place where uh, the cable just kind of wiggled itself disconnected or into a spotty connection situation and that ended up badly quickly. Yeah, the solution is that I'm just adding silicone here and I have like a TPU uh, strain relief that also allows everything to kind of come out of the two head in one bundle. So there's no like kind of strain between two separate locations. Like, like normally you would have uh, your wire coming from here and then your TPU filament tube from here. So this all kind of makes it a nice bundle. No extra strain. It can flex freely as the two head moves around. And then there's a reinforcement halfway. So up to here I have like a piano wire running. I think this is one mil. And this is just so that the wires don't get tangled into each other. 
I have run it without it and they just kind of sag. I have not tried to run it all the way down to the two head. I think that just puts extra strain on the two head. I don't see any reason why doing that. Uh, yeah, and the second thing that I had trouble with is this distribution box. I started with a solder down situation and I just made it horrible for any repairs or anything. So, and actually here I have all the things flayed out. So what I started out with like this board that I had just soldered down on. And then, yeah, just to make things easier to repair, I moved to this one. And uh, this is just a screw terminals. So the beefy ones for power and the small ones for signal and just, yeah, so soldered down in the back. This actually worked well and the one thing that it was missing was uh, any hold downs for the wires, so it was a huge tangle. That was the main reason why I moved away from that. And then I moved into this, which is uh, kind of Wago clones. So this was one for power. And this is like a one to six distribution board. I don't remember for what, but it kind of worked reasonably well for the canvas. And uh, then I moved into solder down uh, board with a bunch of uh, connectors so i yeah, can't really remove it by one hand but you get the idea so you just have a bunch of connectors soldered down there was like a printed case and uh, the problem with this was that uh, the place where the wires are coming in you can't really pull the connector through so there's like i need to write either redesign the whole uh, plastic that holds the wires in or yeah i just chose to do this simple thing and solder it but otherwise this could actually work and, and this is also a big pain to just 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 make soldering things down to a breadboard is way easier or this is not the breadboard what's the name for this uh don't remember prototyping board let's let's stay at that and why did i go through all of this uh, essentially i had like uh, random disconnects from canvas and sometimes it will work for days and sometimes it would just drop things and at the end of the day the issue turned out to be that this usb to can controller was uh, really glitching out i tried reflashing the firmware i tried adding like a heat sink to it that didn't help it would like randomly just glitch out and uh, so yeah this was actually cannibal v2 pro which was kind of on the higher end rated for like five megabits supporting not, not more than just the basic can controller so i thought oh yeah this would be nice but uh, it turned out it was actually causing all the issues one more thing i tried is just to put a capacitor bank to my power supply in case the power supply was doing the glitching of course that also didn't help so yeah at the moment when i swapped out for this like stock i think this is mellow fly board yeah Things just started working uh, without any problems whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, canvas works. Debugging canvas sucks. Uh, what I discovered is that the default uh, reaction to spotty canvas connection is just for the two heads to stop responding. And a restart of the two head would bring it back. So essentially canvas doesn't have a recovery mechanism. There is just let's let's isolate myself from the network way to handle the errors and that does not really work well this clipper just fails your job obviously so yeah so far i have been i don't know like 100 hours in maybe more with printing with this new talk uh, canvas board so everything is going smoothly the rest of the printer is solid. Uh, I don't plan any immediate upgrades. Just, yeah, printing and enjoying it. Cool. Uh, that's it for today. And yeah, coming back to this fan. Yeah, that was yet another idea how to make things less unstable until I figured out that I just need to swap out that canvas board. I, I have the regular fans and I added one more set of fans in the other side, a fan in the middle, 
uh, because I, I saw that things got worse as hotter you print. Like printing PLA was fine, printing ABS was worse, like more glitches when you print ABS. And uh, all right, that's it for today. And happy printing. Bye-bye.